Hey guys, Ernie here, and welcome to the Paleo Hiker MD channel. Pardon the noise, but the water is beautiful here. I am hiking the Harris Creek Trail near the Cossatot River Nature Area here in the Ozark Mountains of Arkansas. I'm out for a day hike. It is finally sunny. I've been here for the last three days and has done nothing but thunderstorm. But I'm finally out here on a day hike. I thought I'd show you guys a little bit around this place and also discuss something that is very frequently asked of me. What do I bring on a typical day hike? Well, stay tuned and I'll show you guys what I bring when I go out on the trail. Thanks for watching. I moved a little bit away from the river. It was just so loud. And I wanna show you guys what I bring on a typical day hike. Again, like I said, this is something that I get asked a lot on the channel. So I thought this was a perfect opportunity to kind of take you guys through what I bring. And I pretty much break it down on categories and we'll go through those categories here. This is representative of what I typically take and it's pretty spot on for most of my day hikes. But as always, there's flexibility involved for you and for me. I may put things in, take things out, whatever it might be based on the situation. Everything is gonna start with this right here, which is the backpack. I always, 95% of the time, take my Hidden Woodsman Day Ruck. Once I got these side pouches about six months ago, it turned into the perfect day hike a pack. It gave me that little bit of extra room that I needed to make sure I could carry everything that I wanted to bring. Without the side pouches, it's a great day pack if you're just going for really minimal hiking and stuff like that, but the side pouches make the biggest difference on making it the perfect day pack. Especially when you're someone like me that carries a lot of gear and films YouTube videos. So we talked about the backpack. Let's look inside and see what other stuff we've got. First of all, I like to have stuff for fire starting and wood processing. For fire starting, I always bring my Hidden Woodsman Possible's pouch. This is orange. I bought it specifically in orange so that it would be my fire pack. Inside of this, I got all kinds of stuff we'll talk about. My major things that I bring for fire starting are of course a lighter. I bring some type of a fire starter. This is a wax wood stick from Pro Camp Tech. A fire steel and my open L that I always bring. It's got an awesome spine on it so I can scrape with it. I have some fire plugs also from Pro Camp Tech. Very, very nice fire starter. And then a couple of miscellaneous things. I've got a pocket bellows. I've got some alcohol for my alcohol stove if I use it. And I've got some bug repellent. Now call it me old fashioned, but I also bring my compass. We'll talk a little bit more about it, but I just wanted to show you guys that the compass is in here. I also keep a first aid kit. This first aid kit is pretty straightforward. It's really the one that I bring backpacking. I just throw it in. It has plenty of pills as far as Tylenol, Advil, Aleve, some Lamotil. I've got another mini fire starter here. I've got a small knife in the form of this little Swiss Army knife. I've got some more fire starters and I've got a needle stuff for blisters and some Luco tape and other blister care stuff here in my first aid kit. This is a hiking related first aid kit, not a bushcraft related first aid kit, but it's always with me and usually lives inside of my fire kit. Now, if I'm gonna start a fire, I also need to be able to process some wood. So I almost always bring my Silky Gone Boy and some knife. Lately, I've been carrying the Mora Garber quite a bit. I like it and it works very well. So that's fire starting and wood processing. I always bring some sort of a light source headlamp. Uh, I've been using this Nightcore recently. It's very lightweight. It's USB rechargeable, which is really nice. That's what I use for a light source. Always make sure you bring one with you guys. You never know when you may get stuck out, get hurt or something, and you'll need to be able to see in the dark. Like we talked about, I already discussed the first aid kit. That was in the other kit, but always bring a first aid kit. Rest of the stuff in my possibles pouch here. I've got my SteriPen. This is one of the two ways that I normally carry to purify water. This allows me to treat water very easily. I also have in my first aid kit quite a few water purification tablets. They treat one liter of water each. On very important items like water, you want to make sure that you have more than one option. So I always carry this and the water purification tablets. Other stuff in my possibles pouch that are usually that's usually in here is just a little cloth. I've got one or two spoons in here usually. I've got coffee. I've got some Propel um, grape flavored electrolyte powder and of course some heavy cream in case I'm gonna make some coffee. I've got salt, pepper. These are just basic things in a possible's pouch and what a possible's pouch is really all about. Now, of course, if we're gonna make coffee, you have to have some kind of a cook kit. And the cook kit that I always carry with me now is my titanium canteen cook kit from Keith Titanium. You can also get it from Heavy Cover. They're co-produced, very, very similar products, basically the same, just branded by one company or the other. The very nice canteen. A uh, cup you can make coffee in. It stands up to direct fire or whatever else you want to use it for. It's got a lid, like I said. I've got a little koozie that allows me to put it in there if it's really hot. And some water here in my canteen, which I'm going to drink right now. Going along with the cook kit, you have to have some way to actually cook your stuff. So what I usually carry is right here in one of my Sammy pouches from the Hidden Woodsman. And that is 
my Firebox Nano, Titanium Nano. Um, you can use this as a wood stove, obviously. I have a video, and I'll try to remember to link it down below, a video about it. If I don't feel like starting a fire, or it's an area that I don't want to start a fire, I've got always my Trangia Spirit Burner. This, I uh, usually, before I leave, will fill with a couple ounces of alcohol. That will boil one cup of water very easily. I also, like I said, carry an extra ounce just in case for emergencies in this little bottle. I keep that little bottle and the Trangia inside my fire kit because I don't want the alcohol to be anywhere near anything I might eat with, like spoons and stuff in the possible pouch. But that gives me the ability to do a wood fire if it's nice I have plenty of fire starters and way to get that started very easily I don't want to have to take time on a day hike to collect a bunch of stuff but I also have my Trangia which works super well and boils up two cups of water very easily for either coffee or a meal if I'm eating it hunter safety is something that we think about a lot here in the south I think everybody should think about it I usually carry this orange uh, signal panel from the hidden woodsman I can drape it across the top of my backpack here and it makes me stand out when I'm walking in the woods any bit of orange is going to take care of it I often also use an orange baseball hat but I don't have it with me today because I'm in parts of Arkansas that you can't hunt in and that's why I don't have this draped over my backpack but always think about hunter safety something that's always in my pack for day hikes even in non-hunting season a lot of times I will put this on because you just never know in here in my possibles pouch I also carry a couple of other things just cordage guys I carry a lot of cordage with me just in case I need any for whatever reason I never want to go without that cordage I carry some paracord as well as some bank line that goes in here along with my firebox nano these sammy pouches are awesome uh, I'm not sure that Malcolm actually makes them anymore if he ever does I would highly recommend y'all picking some up I have two of them and they work awesome for all kinds of kit you can fill them with anything you want this happens to be a little Joe Robinette version which is cool the other sammy pouch that I have is a consequence of shooting YouTube videos this has all of my goods from the standpoint of a battery battery charger SD cards and of course all my extra batteries for my Panasonic G7 this is something that a lot of people won't necessarily carry but I carry it every single time because I do make videos and I need to be able to power my electronics and this allows me to do it like I said this Sammy pouch is perfect I bought a second one specifically for this and it works perfectly just tie a little surgeon's knot and you got yourself ready to go one thing to talk about as well is safety from the standpoint of knowing where you are there's a lot of different ways to do that like I showed you guys I always have a compass I'm not sure maybe that's just my old school in me I've never used it but I've got it just in case I ever need it I've got a compass on my phone I usually got a compass on my watch I make sure that I can keep my phone charged at all times I use the Gaia app uh, I'll put a little link down below to the app that I use and a little information down here about what it actually is it is subscription based there's a lot of different ones but it gives me a lot of maps and I can download those maps for offline use like today and so no matter if I have cell signal or not, which I currently do not have cell signal, I can use that to locate where I am and make sure that I don't get lost. I also have a traditional Garmin GPS that honestly, guys, has gone by the wayside. I don't use it very much because everything I need is in my phone and it's one less thing that I have to carry and one less thing that I have to keep charged. With the technology we have out there, it's hard to believe people can still get lost. They can. I think they probably do when they get in way over their heads. Uh, they get lost and then the elements start to cause issues but with the technology that we have today you really should not get lost if you prepare before you go i also used to carry spot messenger that would allow me to send messages to my wife i used that for about two years it worked perfectly well but i really wanted the ability to send messages back and forth so i just recently got about three months ago the garmin inreach mini i'm using it i've been using it quite a bit i have sent her uh, messages and stuff like that in fact you know what let's do that now because i have not sent her one yet so I just sent her a message to her phone that says, out of signal, let me know if you need me. This allows me to uh, stay in touch with my family if needed. I will do, if you guys want, a full review on the Garmin InReach Mini. I'm not quite ready to do that yet um, because I haven't used it enough to really feel comfortable saying how it works. You just heard that little beep that shows right there. That's how quickly, real time, that message was sent to her. Now I have very good signal. I have a clear view to the open sky. It's blue skies. Oh, and a glorious breeze. So anyway, it was 35 degrees and rainy yesterday, and it's 70 degrees and pretty hot right now, so that breeze is nice. Anyway, if you guys want a full review on the Garmin InReach, it really is peace of mind for me and really peace of mind for my wife. Um, she can get a hold of me. I can get a hold of her in any situation. 
you know, it's great to have the spot where I can send them, hey, I'm fine, here's my location, everything is good. And of course, this does the same thing. It has an SOS button that I can contact emergency services. The other cool thing is since I can send messages back and forth, I can actually tell emergency services what's wrong with me. Hey, I have a broken leg or hey, I'm lost or hey, whatever is going on, I need help in this specific type of help. I can even use it for non you know, life-threatening emergencies. Uh, if I'm on the side of the road or something, I have no cell signal, I can chat with the people at Garmin and they can help me out. So just adds a lot of security. I'm not sure how comfortable my wife and kids will be with me going out here in the middle of nowhere without something like this. And this new product is awesome because I can talk back and forth. She'll probably respond here in a little bit, just letting me know she got it. Like I said, there are some nuances to using this device and I can go over it specifically in a video if you guys want but I wanna use it another couple months before I do that. Last thing will be comfort, and that was the very first thing that I got out. This is my uh, Z-Seat from Thermarest. This thing goes everywhere with me, literally everywhere that I go outside. It comes with me for things like this. I'm always doing stuff on the ground. I'm always on talking to the camera, whatever, and it gives me a good place to put my knees. They don't get uh, uncomfortable, and they don't get wet and dirty, so that's awesome. Just a couple of comfort items like this, a chair maybe if you want, which I usually don't carry. I do have a very nice Helinox chair, but usually for day videos, I use this and it works perfectly well. I can kneel on it, I can sit on it. Comfort is important, don't forget about it. That's what I bring on pretty much every day hike that I go on. I'm gonna pack it back up and we'll review everything one more time for you guys. All right, so let's review real quick the categories that I want to make sure I check off before I leave for a day hike. First of all, as a backpack, you want something to carry all your gear in, obviously. Next is fire starting and fire processing. That's gonna include getting the fire going as well as processing the wood, whether you want a saw, an ax, a knife, whatever it might be. I think at the very least you need a knife and a folding saw is definitely helpful. You want a light source. I usually carry a headlamp. Sometimes I'll carry a headlamp and a flashlight, but today I carry just a headlamp and normally that's what I do. All my headlamps, all my flashlights these days are USB rechargeable. I always have my battery with me because I'm filming stuff. So that way I can make sure I never run out of power. You want a first aid kit, make sure you tailor your first aid kit to what you're doing. Normally my day hikes involve very minimal activity, whether it be uh, using a knife, whatever. So, so I carry basic things to take care of cuts. I also carry medicines for fever, for joint pain. I carry stuff for blisters, which is very important. You don't want to have any blisters. The Danner boots that I use work perfectly. I've never had any blisters with them, but I always have some Leukotape. I have a video specifically about Leukotape and helping prevent blisters with that. Check that out if you're interested. It tells you in detail how to use the Leukotape to make sure you don't have any blisters. Either way, make sure you always carry a first aid kit. If you wanna cook something, and I would suggest you always carry some kind of a container, uh, the container is gonna be good if you can have a container that will carry water and allow you to boil in it. You want some kind of a stove, you can use a wood stove, you can use an alcohol stove, a propane stove, whatever it is you want, but just make sure you have some way to heat water, especially if you wanna make some coffee because you always want coffee, right? Just the basics, you want a cook kit and some kind of stove to go with it. Similarly, you want some type of a water container. The water container you wanna choose very specifically. I use my canteen, uh, titanium canteen from Keith. I spent a lot of money on it and it works very well. It's ultra light and I take it everywhere with me. If you're gonna spend money like that, you wanna use it as much as you can. It weighs as much as a regular Nalgene, but it gives me the opportunity to boil water in it if I want to. I also really like it because it allows one of my water treatment options, which is the SteriPen, to fit through the opening. You have to have an opening at the top large enough for those metal contacts to hit the water and my canteen works perfect. From the standpoint of safety, you want hunter safety. If you live down south or you live anywhere where there may be hunters out, you wanna wear hunter's orange as much as you can. You wanna be nice and visible. You also want safety from the standpoint of navigation, a GPS if you have it, a smartphone without question with some kind of preloaded map so you know where you are, and a compass I think is always good to have just in case. A lot of times like today, whenever I went on the Harris Creek Trail, they had a little map, a little printed map. I grabbed it and put it in here as well because sometimes it'll contain information that isn't on other maps. I think a bonus and something that I would really recommend if you do this a lot is some kind of personal emergency beacon. I use the Garmin InReach. Like I said, I've used it for a couple months now and really like it. I'll do a video on it at some point. But you want something that you can send an SOS out with if you have an emergency or a problem. You want to be able to get rescued and those GPS devices lead people straight to you. The InReach in particular also allows me to communicate with my wife and my kids if needed, which is wonderful. But like I said, on top of that, it allows them to communicate with me and that's really important. 
Electronics are important. If you have a phone, I do recommend you carry some kind of a battery bank with you to make sure you can charge your phone. If it's your primary mode of navigation, you want to make sure that you have it charged. You don't want it to run out of batteries, taking videos, taking pictures, and next thing you know, you don't have enough batteries, so bring a battery bank with you. Last thing is comfort. You want to make sure you're comfortable out on the trail, whether that means a sit pad like I bring or a full-on chair, whatever it is you want, make sure you're comfortable out there. It makes being in the woods a lot more enjoyable. I hope this answers questions for you guys. I get asked all the time what I bring on a typical day hike, and I thought I would break it down in these categories, and then you can go in and decide whatever it is you want to bring for your day hikes. If you like this video, guys, please do me a favor. Hit the thumbs up down below. It really helps spread things across YouTube. It helps tremendously. If you want to make sure you don't miss any videos, hit the subscription button if you're not already subscribed. And if you want to be absolutely sure you don't miss any videos and they pop up on your feed, hit that ding dong bell and you'll be the first to know. I'm almost done with the Harris Creek Trail here. I'm heading back to the car and I'm going to go up north to the north trailhead of the Cossatot River Corridor Trail where I'm going to do some fishing. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more videos here on Paleo Hiker MD.